we could be with all of you today to celebrate the life of Dr. King and the movement of which he was a part. Because of him, because of his glorious words and deeds, because of his hopeful vision and his moral imagination, we found the courage to come as far as we have. Because of him and his fellow marchers, barricades began to fall and bigotry began to fade. Laws changed, but so did hearts and minds. New doors of opportunity swung open for each new generation. Just look around. We can see with our own eyes that America is fairer and freer and more just than it was in Dr. King's time. People of all colors and creeds live together and work together and fight alongside one another and love one another. It's progress that expresses itself in a million ways, large and small, across this country of ours every single day. We're right to savor that progress, but we also have to take stock of all the work that remains. We're right to remember that such progress didn't come easily, that for every victory there were setbacks and defeats, that for every two steps forward we often take a step back. There's hope to be found, though, in the longer story that is America, the story defined by forward motion, a constant widening of our founding creed to embrace all of us and not just some. And we can see it in each new generation that recognizes it too is America, that takes up Dr. King's mantle of leadership and marches on that mall in Washington, whether it's for jobs and justice or for educational and economic opportunity, for action to reform our criminal justice system or to stem gun violence. To this day, as we celebrate a man and a movement that did so much for this country, we should draw strength from those earlier struggles and from the marchers of today. We should hold fast to our oldest and most cherished belief that we, the people, hold the power to continually remake this nation to more closely align with our highest ideals. We should take what victories we achieve, secure them, and then build on them, always refusing, as Dr. King did, to accept what he called the isness of today and keep pushing toward the oughtness of tomorrow. We can't be trapped or discouraged by what is. We've got to keep pushing for what ought to be, an economy that works for all our people, a government that lives up to our highest ideals, an America worthy of our children's expectations. And if we maintain our faith in the progress we've made, in the incredible possibilities of this nation, and above all, in ourselves, there is nothing we cannot achieve. Thank you. May God bless you all.